Thanks, Omar. Um, uh, nice to meet everyone in the morning. Um, today, I'm going to mainly talk about the Sonic update. Um, uh, in the whole afternoon, we will have a session to break down and to go deep dive the architect. So where I will go, I will stay at very high level in the morning and uh, uh, leave the meet to the afternoon. So in today's session, uh, in this session, I will going to uh, talk mainly three parts. One is for the newcomers, uh, what is Sci and Sonic. The second part is what's going on, what has been developed in the community. The third part is how the community activity has been organized and what's going on there. At the end, I will let you know in the, the detail agenda for the afternoon. So for the newcomers, Sonic and Sai, Sonic basically is a OS. If you ask me the main thing to take away, first, it's OS built on top of Linux. It's running on hardware. What's unique about this OS is, it's the first thing is platform agnostic. The platform agnostic capability comes from Sai. It's a in abstraction layer to abstract the behavior of ASIC. Force them using, before using different dialect, talking to the control plane uh, software, using the same language, same APIs, to talk to the um, upstream um, control platform, so that the application developers can focus um, on the application, the business needs, to forget about the very complicated, um, uh, diverse behavior of ASIC. With the help of SAI, this standardization, it enables us to build a control plane OS um, uh, to, uh, uh, to be platform agnostic. So this is the first takeaway of this OS. Second, it is a containerized OS. Um, this is unique uh, before the whole OS um, has been built into one big image, uh, one big block. Whenever you need to um, upgrade anything, fix a bug, roll out a patch, you have to uh, replace the whole image. This is very risky and uh, uh, very scary, particularly it's uh, for the boxes running uh, in the data center in production. So what we did is actually break the component into containers, uh, leverage the clean uh, isolation from Docker to put different um, uh, component to different Dockers. This actually bring us a few um, uh, advantages. Um, the OS start from a very simple scenario, data scenario, data, uh, data center scenarios, which are not that complicated, does not cover all the MPLS or WAN scenarios. So when you have a smaller core, you have a Sonic code, you have a higher quality. Um, using this containerized architect enable us um, to cherry pick the components from the, uh, from the uh, industry. We don't need to uh, reinvent the wheel. Um, for example, BGP, we have choices. We can use Quagga, we can use FRR, or even if needed, we can go to commercial component. From the SMP, we can pick the um, industry known SMPD, LLPD, uh, also coming from the uh, industry uh, open source package as well as um, containerized architect enable you to extend it easily to your scenario. This does not, starting from data center scenario, it does not cover a full spectrum of what a switch can do. But it does not stop you from can take this OS, add your component, for example, MPLS or SPF, um, easily extend to, um, to your own scenario. So this is the second takeaway if you ask me what is Sonic. So in a nutshell, we are disaggregated the whole network through this OS. What it enables us, the first one uh, I already stated, enables us able to choose different platforms since we have an API. The same API enables us to migrate the uh, uh, software from one hardware to the other hardware seamlessly. It enables us um, to have more freedom to choose different hardware as well as cherry pick the software component. Second, um, running a data center operation, uh, operation and management ability is a big deal for us. Um, the switch 
is never a standalone switch. We have to manage thousands or millions of switches together and can maintain this security patch bug fixes, uh, bug fixes are always continuously happening. So we need a system that uh, are fully automated, uh, uh, can be managed in a very fine uh, granularity for upgrade, for the maintenance of the whole network. We cannot see that it's a standalone system. So the again, the containerized um, uh, architect that we find out it's very handy for us to do upgrade, to develop new tools, to de deploy containers to the switch um, for the um, uh, management, um, uh, for the easy list of the management. It also enables us to have fast um, technical or technology evolution. In the next few slides, I will show you what happened in the, um, in the community, that uh, how fast we innovate, how fast we progress, um, and how fast we can roll out. Um, it's, it's open sourced to OCP. You are able to find the, um, uh, the code on the uh, GitHub and also as well as on the um, OCP uh, wiki. With that, I'm going to talk about um, the releases happening um, since uh, March OCP Summit, what has happening in the community and what we have been working on, giving you uh, uh, a two scenarios, uh, why we are working on that. And um, so first of all, um, this is a, great, uh, is a, is a high level picture of our releases. Um, as before that, we are doing a quarterly release um, uh, every like since last December, this March, um, July, October, and December. Each quarter, we are trying to release an image. Um, what we have been working on uh, since March, you can see um, different uh, projects coming in. Uh, since uh, March, we have been working on the critical resource monitoring, enable you to penetrate, to look, peek into the ASIC, uh, to understand what type of resource um, is, um, uh, is um, have a warning or is getting close to the threshold so that um, the, the OS or the application um, uh, in the north part will be able to react fast before it happens. I'm going to give you an example of the work we are doing in the uh, PFC watchdog area. That this year actually comes with a real scenario that happened in the data center, how the community is working on, iterated on it, and keep improving through uh, iterations. So PFC watchdog is helping people to achieve, uh, to achieve quality of service. You have traffic loss and loss, uh, loss list and lossage uh, traffic. Um, this is actually at a very high level. It's a mechanism enabled to negotiate um, the traffic uh, and the, how much buffer I have. If you are sending too much traffic, I'm not able to handle it. My queue is quickly filling up. I need to tell. I need to tell either the upstream or downstream uh, that you have to stop it. I'm sending the pause frame, you have to behave um, so that um, we, will we will be able to protect lossless um, traffic. So um, in the real data center, we have seen that um, due to MACNIC is um, a MACNIC a NIC, which continues to send um, PFC pause traffic, it will be able to propagate to the TORS tell TORS that you have, to, um, uh, you have to pause, and then the TOR propagate this to the whole network. So the whole network actually will be able, I mean, um, the whole network can be blocked by a single med leak. This is a real scenario that um, what we have been working on is, um, we have developed the PFC watchdog to prevent this server from blocking the whole network. It helps to first detect the um, post frame storm, uh, post frame storm from the server. The second one is to recover the storm uh, after detection. So this scenario is actually is very real, um, uh, real world that um, uh, we're handling all these um, issues that we put it into the OS and also evolving it. 
after this problem is resolved, uh, we didn't stop there. We found another issue that um, uh, in some case, it depends on how you tell the server that um, I traffic, I divide my traffic into loss on loss list, that um, uh, sometimes you use different tag. Um, we have seen a scenario that um, the way you tag the traffic is not recognized by the NIC, so they put everything into one queue. So in order to handle these uh, scenarios that um, uh, we develop another method, this is a symmetric behavior. Uh, any, any interface can send the pause traffic to the upstream. Um, uh, uh, and uh, sorry, um, any, only in the um, only the lossy traffic can send a pause um, frame to the upstream, but the interface will behave, will stop, will react to the pause frame from all the priorities. This is to help to handle one scenario, special scenario, if your tag, for some reason, cannot be recognized by the NIC, it put every traffic into one loss list queue, uh, one, uh, one loss list queue, it will not uh, starve, starve the real loss list traffic. And we are also looking forward to how to improve debugging this by introducing a headroom uh, watermark feature that uh, enable us to query the headroom, uh, the ma maximum headroom and the history of this, um, these settings so that later we can easily troubleshooting what happened in the data center and the help us to prevent uh, uh, to, to either starve or the storm uh, for the loss list uh, traffic. So this is the first, um, first example that uh, why we are working on PFC Watchdog and a serious development in the community, in the society that we put into the image to improve the quality of service. The second one I'm looking at is um, the warm report. This is a big effort recently happened uh, in Sony community. Uh, last December, is, uh, like uh, in last December, we have released the fast reboot. Um, uh, features. Um, after that, um, we keep developing uh, and plan to re uh, uh, plan to re uh, release the warm reboot features um, in this October. What does it mean? Is um, in the, this is a typical class um, architect in the data center. Um, usually, Tor is the single point of failure in the uh, in the network. A lot of traffic has been more and more strict on the downtime, on the availability on the network. Um, with all this gaming AI traffic appearing in the network, they really require, um, they have zero tolerance of packet loss or uh, net network disruption. So we put higher and higher um, requirement to this switch OS in order to operate the whole network. We have two methods. One is fast reboot, one is re warm reboot. Fast reboot is when you have a need to reboot the machine. When you have a need to reset the ASIC, um, we require that have a, the data, data plane has a minimum, has a maximum downtime of 30 seconds. So what we did actually is a trick in the OS to separate the um, action of um, OS upgrade, um, which interrupt the uh, control plane, uh, which disrupt the control plane time, um, and ASIC um, reset wo uh, boot up time and initiation time. So in this uh, in this picture, we are showing the detailed timing of um, what happened in this. Uh, in this um, procedure. Uh, as you can see from the Linux kernel boot up, uh, we are using, we are allowing the uh, uh, Sonic OS to boot uh, without, uh, while the ASIC is continue functioning. So only the um, control plane is, uh, is done. After the control plane is uh, getting up, uh, what we are doing is um, talking to the uh, uh, T1s, uh, let it go through the BGP graceful star, and uh, then uh, instruct the ASIC to be boot up, reset, or initiated uh, in, in a very minimal time. 
So in this way, we are by coordinate the um, the uh, the OS start and the uh, um, ASIC start. Uh, we are able to achieve uh, thirty second if you are uh, you if you need to. Um, if you need to reset some bug, uh, uh, you, if you need to reset your ASIC to clean up all these errors. This is um, not enough. Um, in terms of if you don't need to restart your ASIC, what we will do? Actually, you will have more uh, strict requirement for this data plan downtime to be even less than one second. So same here, the difference is um, uh, after the OS, Again, we separate the uh, we separate procedures to two steps. One is the um, OS um, upgrade, um, which um, uh, is only cause downtime on the control plane. And the uh, after control plane finished all the preparation, it comes to data plane. It uh, restart it, uh, restart the ASIC. What it will do is the control plane will continue to learn the new status and consolidate the existing ASIC state with the new uh, what has been updated during this downtime. After this consolidation, it will write to the ASIC to make it um, uh, reboot very fast, but with the latest, um, with the latest um, status uh, consolidated uh, from the control plane. In this way, we are trying to minimize the downtime to be uh, less than one second. So by these two example I'm giving you is um, the OS actually is evolving very fast and uh, so that um, uh, this is a living OS, um, new requirement uh, continuously appear um, in the data center in your, in your scenarios. That, uh, that's why um, uh, we, have, um, we have keeping adding the, um, uh, the feature request to our backlog or to our development plan. Um, a few other things what we are working on is um, uh, Debian uh, kernel upgrade to 4.9. The timeline, like our plan for this is in October release. Uh, calling out um, uh, for the vendors, for the drivers, um, uh, what you need to do is is platform drivers, you need to upgrade the, your driver support to um, kernel 4.9 as well as we are working on the um, configuration to, increase, to, to provide um, uh, improvement on the uh, configuration model to in allow you to do um, incremental configuration on IPs, NACs, or uh, port shutdown and shard. This is, um, has been put in, on the agenda, um, uh, one second, has been put on agenda, agenda until the uh, October. That's how the com what punk communities are working on. There's a question. Question to restart again. Restart? Yeah. So graceful restart is not going really to help you, just notify your neighbors that you're going through an event. Uh, mm -hmm. FRR started to work on composite next hubs that you really need in multipath environment to provide ability to switch over to another path and pre-program it in forwarding. Mm -hmm. So they're doing this in BGP. There's going to be some work in Zebra in the rip part, but they probably need support from you going down into the FIP. Are you planning on any work in this area? You're talking about uh, which one you're talking about? One uh, composite next hubs for routes. It must have to do with BGP. Fast. BGP graceful restart. Oh, graceful restart uh -huh. is again just gives you ability to keep forwarding while your BGP process is restarting, mm -hmm. right? But if something changes, you need to have pre-computed, pre-populated routes for backup or ECMP others, mm -hmm. and this support has to come from BGP through RIP into the FIP, mm -hmm. and you are doing the FIP work. So my mm -hmm. question is whether you are doing anything to support this functionality. So that you don't have any uh, data loss at all. Yeah. 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 So Gohan is trying to answer from behind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, <clears throat> I, I think, uh, yes, so after, um, after we reboot and uh, the, once the BGP has reestablished, then we'll think uh, we'll do the uh, routes reconciliation. Basically, find out the the different routes, and then 
uh, sync those different routes into the into the ASIC. I think there's um, huh? Um, it depends on. It depends on, you know, there's a timer based, there is also mm -hmm. um, based on the BGP signal, like end of rib, those kind of things, I think. Um, yeah, so then we, we, once we receive the full routes from the neighbors, then we can sync all those routes into the ASIC. I think there's, um, uh, in the afternoon, there is a session uh, on doing those, uh, uh, you know, the BGP uh, graceful restart. Yeah, so yeah. we can discuss more on that. Yeah, we can discuss this in more details, and also we have Q and A sessions. Yeah, thanks. So also a brief look into what's a, um, in our uh, backlog uh, uh, plate. Um, we have we plan to uh, like. Um, uh, working on uh, enable FRR. Uh, actually, it is already a feature that running in LinkedIn's um, data center, like um, in LinkedIn's um, Sonic image that they are using FRR. We are using Quagga, uh, but uh, Sonic is able to enable you to pick different component uh, inside image, um, as well as we are trying to provide um, uh, uh, like um, data plane, um, in new data plane capability VXLAN, bring it, um, expose it from ASIC to the normal this is particularly useful for the bell metal service bell metal um, scenario that we have talked about in the OCP summit in March um, if you are interested in this scenario you can go back to review the um, uh, review the uh, video recording on the YouTube um, S flow um, MLAG PTP are all in the queue coming so by looking at this, um, I would like to introduce a little bit uh, how do we decide the features into the queue and how, how like uh, to the releases. So first of all, we are looking at the new scenarios um, and also the backlog, um, what's going on there. Uh, people can come to the community to po uh, propose I need this feature, why I need it, and uh, what's the user scenarios. And then the second step is actually we need to lock down the contributor. Who is going to work on that? Um, and uh, who has to go into work on that in what time frame? Um, if that has been uh, nailed down, we put it on the agenda of each different releases. I uh, remind you that every three months we release a version. And then we will do a few iterations in the network, in the community, to review your design and review your test plan. I want to call out this is very important because without a test that we are not able to gauge the quality and we are not able to guarantee that other new feature development will not uh, cause regression on your features. And then we do um, a pull request for code reviews, uh, also call out for people to participate, not only to contribute to code, but to help to review the code from each other. Um, we, after test, we merge it to the master. Um, getting very close to the release time, we will branch out the release. Um, branch out the release to uh, like September release, October, uh, like December release. We will branch it out after we release this branch. Only bug fixes or new platform support uh, will, be uh, will be accepted into this release. How it is organized, uh, community activities, we discuss all this in our community meeting. It is currently a bi-weekly meeting every Tuesday. Um, every Tuesday morning, uh, East Coast, uh, 8, to, um, 8 to 9. The, um, the recording has been published uh, on OCP Wiki. It's uh, on the YouTube, thanks to OCP. Um, we periodically will send out email uh, to add community meetings when getting close to the uh, release time. We also have mailing list. People are asking questions. Uh, we are starting to triage the issues if you post it in the uh, Sonic uh, repo if you raise an issue technical issue i highly recommend you to go to the um sonic repo to raise the issue that we are doing we are starting to doing the weekly triage on the issues and then come back to feedback to the community uh, what are the real issues and what's the next step on that uh, we also have a slack um uh, discussing group with that um 
I'm going to conclude this uh, high-level talk uh, with uh, this afternoon's plan. We have uh, three parts prepared for you. Uh, the first part is um, particularly for um, uh, platform vendors, ASIC vendors. Um, how do you build your uh, How do you build your platform? We saw that a lot of questions has been asked in the mailing list. So we are going to talk about uh, platform build, uh, porting guide, um, or as well as uh, uh, how to build image, uh, images, like uh, Belford is going to talk about their flavors to build images. Um, and we are going to demonstrate how can you run side uh, tests through PTF. The second part will be a deep dive into the architect from uh, uh, Rolly um, from Linking. Um, this one is um, to go into prepare the next time if we have a hackathon, uh, you will be equipped by the knowledge of the architect of Sonic, the components, how it is connected. If you want to plug in uh, like container, um, for example, he is going to use FRR as a use case for you how to enable a protocol into the uh, um, into uh, Sonic platform. The third part will be um, telemetry. I left the telemetry part um, out from my talk. Uh, this has been developed in the release actually in our June re July release uh, already. GRPC enable you enable you uh, doing the streaming telemetry uh, from the database to your management system. Chipan uh, and Chen Gen Fan will will talk about this, the architect and the do a small demo. Uh, at the end, we are going to leave thirty minutes for Q and A. Yeah, thanks. With that, I'm um, yeah finishing my talk. So uh, on the future stuff that you're working on, you put L three M lag. Yeah. Can you? Describe that just a little bit. What uh, is involved with that? It's actually just the L lag, M lag, which enable you have dual tor, um, dual tor in the to provide uh, redundancy. Um, so to that's the servers. that's really not L three. It's an L two based. Um, you can say that. Um, so we probably will work on L three first. Um, uh, like Guohan, do you wanna comment on that? Yeah. You know the the M lag is a complex feature, you yeah. know, especially you know there to their uh, network environment. Um, but um, when we when we need to apply digital um, architecture in the data center, you know our our layer three is end up at the tall layer, so um, we don't really have a huge layer two network. So in this case, we can simplify some assumptions that have been made uh, to handle layer two M lag, and we can. Um, then you know, simplify the assumptions and then simplify the implementations. We can only uh, make the M lag work on this um, this uh, layer layer three environment where the um, IP ends up on the Tor. That is what we mean by the um, layer three M lag. Yeah. yeah. So our approach is like incremental. Okay. The, approach, yeah. Yeah. the confusion was that layer three um, M lag is some people refer to that in using EVPN with VXLAN. Is is that the approach you're taking here, or is is this more traditional M lag? Uh, as I said, it's a more traditional M lag, but we don't have a large layer two network, and there are some uh, you know multicast traffic. We don't need to handle those kind of us. Um, Simplify the assumptions that have been made for implementing those traditional layer two M lag, um, especially in the data center environment. We don't need all those features, so we can have a simpler version that is uh, um, less bug and uh, you know especially tailored for the data center environment. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, if but if you have scenarios that you would like to um, come to discuss, uh, yeah, uh, we can discuss the user scenario. Yeah. Okay, then I will give time. Yeah, thanks. Yeah.